Hey everyone, welcome to Out of Code. My name is Martijn. I often ask people on Patreon what they would like to see for future videos. And in the last poll that I put up, playing with gyroids came out on top. What is a gyroid, I hear you ask? Well, a gyroid is a type of mathematical surface that allows you to do pretty cool things. If you want to know the exact mathematical properties, then I would suggest going to Wikipedia. But if you want to know what you could do with them, then let's find out. All right, I have here a shader that has a simple ray marcher in it. But this time I don't want to start from scratch because then I have to write a ray marcher from scratch and then it's going to be too long. Uh, well, the video is going to be too long. Um, so if you want to follow along, then uh, check out the link in the description. There is a starting point so that you get the exact same shader as what I have here. So this is just a basic ray marcher. Uh, if you want to know how, how to write a ray marcher yourself, then check out this video. Uh, that link is also in the description. All right, so I have here uh, just a simple cube that I can spin around with the mouse. Uh, but we don't want a cube. We want that gyroid function, right? So let me just collapse some of these functions here so we can scroll uh, back and forth a bit easier. So also let me make this large so you can see this all the way from the other side of your living room and uh, so there is this get distance function and right now there's only a box in there so let's make a gyroid so let me just write it out and then we can play with it so i'm going to say float gyroid equals and a gyroid is just a dot product of of two vectors and the first vector is the sine of p and, and that might be a bit confusing because like this, this P is, is, the, is the 3D marching position and uh, it's a vector three. So it has an X, a Y and a Z. So whenever you see, see this and this is a vector of any kind, a vector two or a vector three or a vector four, then really what, that, what that's doing is this. It's doing sin dot P uh, or like the sine of PX, the sine of PY and the sine of PZ. That is the same thing, okay? It's just that in shading languages, you can do uh, you can do the same instruction on all members of a of a vector at once. So that's what this is. So so this gives me a a, a vector that is like the sign of the location each time, and then uh, dot product is uh, always between two vectors, and so the other vector is not the cosine of just p. But uh, P and then uh, shuffled around a little bit or swizzled. And we swizzle it like this, I think. Otherwise, we can change it if it's not right. So this, this basically just makes it that it swaps around the X, the X, uh, Y, and Z values. So that where it was the X value, now it's the Z value. Where it was the Y, now it's the X. And where, it's, where it was the Z, now it's the Y. Uh, and that, my friends is all there is to it. So let's have a look at this gyroid and let's see what this looks like. Ooh. So now we have a bunch of spirals here and it's a bit hard to see what's going on here uh, when I move around. So uh, let's do a little trick um, and let's use that box to to contain the gyroid because we can use a boolean function, uh, a boolean intersection to only show the gyroid where, where the box is or inside of the box. And if you want to know about that, I did a video about, uh, about booleans. You can check that out over here and also in the description. So let's do this. So let me just make a flow D for distance that will just keep, keep the distance as we're kind of adding and subtracting things. Uh, so D equals um, mm, the maximum of box and the gyroid. And that is how you do an intersection. So and now and over here, I'm just going to return that distance D. So now I only see the gyroid where it is inside of the box. And uh, right now you don't, you, you can't really see that much because the gyroid is too big or the box is too small. So let's scale the gyroid. And in order to scale, you can just scale the, the position. So if I scale the position, then it will scale the gyroid. And now I get a lot of 
screw ups here because if you scale, if you scale an object uh, by, by doing this, then you have to subtract the final distance by that same amount. So let's go over here and divide that by 10. And now we have something like this. And that already looks pretty cool. Let me, let me zoom in a tiny little bit. Uh, okay, so here's my camera code. That's to rotate. And then over here, I get my ray direction. And that's the zoom factor. So we can set, set the zoom to 2 to zoom in. And that looks pretty cool for one line of code. Um, let's, let's look at this gyroid in 2D for one second so that we can maybe get a better idea of, of what we're looking at. So um, now you know what, actually before that, let, let's just take this and put this in its, own, in its own gyroid function. So let me just cut this and say over here, float SD gyroid and SD stands for signed distance. And sine distance just means that the function will return a positive number when, our, when the position is outside of the shape and it returns a negative number when it's inside of the shape. That's what signed distance means. Uh, and so, doo -doo -doo, where am I? Over here. So that's going to take a vec3p as an input. And uh, now we could stick all of this in here. And now, um, what I'll do, uh, like this 10 here, let's, let's have that as a parameter. So I, I call that parameter scale, and then I just have to add that over here, float scale. And uh, then I have to, uh, I multiply by scale over there, and then I'm going to divide by scale over here. And I don't have to do this. I could just return that value right away. So return. And uh, let's just see what that looks like real quick. So float gyroid equals SD gyroid. And then I just put my position P and then, uh, and then the scale, right? So I could do a different scale, let's say 8. And then I get that. So that works. All right, so now let's just look at it in 2D real quick. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so here I do my camera setup. And then here I do the actual ray marching. And then the uh, D that comes out of it is the distance to, to the point where we hit the surface. And if the, here we say if that distance is smaller than some maximum distance, we know that we actually hit something. And so instead of here, we have to do the material, if you will. And then uh, after here, we're kind of done. So, so let's just clear the screen here. So I could just clear it by multiplying everything by zero. That just makes a black screen. And let's just look at that gyroid uh, in 2D. So I'm going to say float D equals SD gyroid. And then um, I need some sort of 3D position to put into here. Um, but we just want to look at one slice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a, I'm going to make a 3D, 3D coordinate by using the UVs. So UV.X and UV.Y. And, and my UVs goes from, go from minus something to zero to, to plus something over here. Uh, and, then, uh, and then for my last coordinate, I'm going uh, to put in which, which height, which slice I want to, to see. So I could, that could be any number. So let's just, let's just start with zero. Uh, and then I need to have a scale as well. So let's say 10. And now that I have that distance, I need to add add that to, to my call value, so plus equals D. Now let's see what that looks like. Uh, D redefinition, because I'm already using it up, I'm already using it up here, D, so I just don't have to declare it again, I could just do that. And uh, now it's almost black, you can see a tiny little bit, and uh, that is because um, this division over here, that last, that last division that we do over here, that's because uh, this is this is giving us an actual distance, but over here we don't need a distance. We just need a we just need a value that we can see. Um, so we have to multiply it again to get to that. And uh, maybe not this much because you can see here that that it goes from black to gray to white, and then there's this burned out area, this kind of plateau. Uh, which tells me that it's oversaturated. So let's just multiply by some smaller number here to be able to see 
that everything is nice and smooth and round. And, um, and now in order to see different slices, because now we only see one slice, um, let's uh, use the time value here. So if I press play, there's this time value here uh, that, that I can use. So I could say i time, uh, and that's probably going to be way too fast. So I do i time times 0.1. And so that will show me a different slice each time. And then I get something like that. And that's already starting to look pretty interesting. Um, yeah, here you can kind of start seeing what this actually does. It, it looks like there are kind of rotating points uh, that are kind of counter-rotating, uh, which, which kind of makes sense. Uh, if you look here, you have a sine and a cosine of something. And in my rotation matrix here that I have up here, you, you also use a sine and a cosine. So it, it's kind of, you know, there's some sort of rotation of points going on. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so let's, let's see here. So, so it goes from white to black, and then there's a whole bunch of black here. Um, and that could be because my distance is zero, but it could also be because my distance is negative. That it, yes, because negative numbers also turn black. So let's see if that is the case. Um, so we could just put an absolute around here and then see what happens. And look, now you can see the negative part as well. So, so this is already, even, even in 2D, that's actually, actually kind of cool. You can make some cool patterns, patterns with that. Um, and um, mm, yeah, so let's, let's use this absolute in, inside of the gyrot function and see what that looks like in 3D. So um, let, me, let me get rid of this and get rid of that to get back to where we were, which is here. So, so supposedly the, the solid parts here also have structure. Uh, it's just that it's negative and it's inside the object and you can't really see it. So let's go over here. Um, and so yeah, it can get negative because this dot product here can get negative because because the, like these vectors are are, are unit vectors that like, like that that will kind of move in some in some Lisa U, Lisa, Lisa Ju pattern like it it will uh, it will move. Uh, but with vectors of a length of one, and if you and if you have a dot product between them, that dot product uh, can uh, can result in in numbers going from minus one to one. Uh, and so, let's put an absolute around just this dot product here, and look at the result. And now we see this ghostly thing, and what we're actually looking at is a surface of zero thickness. And what you're seeing here is just some uh, some errors, really, uh, because uh, you, you really should be able to see a zero thickness surface. Uh, and so what we have to do, and it is zero thickness because, because um, well, if I go back here, because this here goes from, from some positive number to zero and then from zero back to some positive number. And uh, but but they're like the 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 zero ISO line here uh, is is um, has no thickness, and so in order to get some thickness, I would have to subtract from this something. Um, no, not here. Over here, I'd have to subtract some number in order to get some thickness to to this, right? And so similarly, in 3D, I would have to subtract something. So let me just go back to over here. So over here, if I subtract something, let's say 0 0.01, now you can see that we have some surface. And uh, we still get some minor screw-ups here, and that is just because we're overstepping a little bit sometimes, uh, because apparently this is not a, a precise distance. Uh, and so to fix that, I can just go over here where I have my, my, my gyroid and just multiply by some number slightly smaller than, than 1. Uh, to, to make the step size smaller so that we don't overstep. And uh, you kind of have to check which number is best because you want the largest number possible without any screw-ups. Uh, but I think 0.7 is probably the best. Well, I, I, actually, it, it, like, it depends on the thickness, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, like, I think this is probably pretty safe. Uh, if you go thinner, then you would have to make this a bit smaller so that you don't have any issues. Uh, so that's already pretty cool. So let, let's take this and, and, and make this into its own, into its own parameter. So I'll call it thickness. 
thickness. And then I go over here and I say float thickness. And so now I have that. So now I can just put that in here, say point uh, zero 0.02. And I also have to put it down here, otherwise I get an error. So comma point zero 0.02. And uh, let's see, so that seems to work. And then if I go now over here, I can make it thicker. All right. All right. So what else do we have? Um, yeah, so this, this, this gyroid has, has, it divides space up into two, into two spaces, in an inside and an outside, really. It's just that with the absolute, right now we made both sides the outside, but originally, if, if I take this absolute back out, there is an inside, or there is an outside, and then there is an inside, right? So those are, those are two, those are two areas, and um, we could, we could shift this wall from the outside to the inside um, because like so this dot product I said before it goes from minus one to one if we if we add or subtract something here then we can shift that minus one minus one to one we could shift that left or right let's so let's see what that does so if I do minus point one now you see that that wall gets shifted to one side um, and if you do plus it gets shifted to the other side and uh, and so you get different you can get different kind of looks to this like watch what happens if I push that really far uh, now you see that you get almost some sort of lattice structure here uh, even though it's pretty much the same thing uh, so let's also take this out so let's call this bias and then I go over here and I say float bias and um, and then I have to add it over here. So let's say one and over, over here, down here, uh, you can say one. All right, um, so that's another thing you can do. Now let's, let's go back to the 2D, to the 2D version again. And uh, I don't need this absolute anymore because now it's baked into the, into the gyroid itself. Um, let's see here, but now I need to, because my scale is different, I guess I have to change this so that mm, that's too bright. Actually, let me, let me make the scale a bit bigger or smaller so we can see more. And four, five, well, eight, ten. Okay. Uh, and if you press play here. All right, so that is one thing. Why is it not gyroid? Why is it? Why don't I see the inside? Oh, okay, well, I like I do need the absolute because we have an inside and an outside still. So I do need the absolute right here. And now what am I doing wrong? Um, Put it over there. Okay, I don't need the absolute. What I like, the bias was kind of screwing with me. So, yeah. All right. So there we have it. And then let's set the, let's set this back to something smaller. Um, okay. So there are some some other things that we can play with uh, over here. If I go over here, uh, so here I have these two these two vectors. I can I can play and make one of them smaller or larger. I can change the ratio between like uh, the size ratio between them. So I could let's say let's see what happens if I multiply this by two, and now you see you get a a totally different pattern, and uh, and you can get uh, different patterns uh, all over the place for for different for different values between them, and they don't have to be integer values. They could be just any value. So, um, so I encourage you to play with this and see uh, what cool things you can come up with. Um, so let's see what this looks like in 3D. Um, to get rid of that again and get rid of this. And so now we have something different looking. Uh, you see that there's more screw ups now, and, but that is just because, um, because we multiplied here. Like basically we're scaling we're scaling an object, and if we scale it, then the rule was that we have to we have to bake that into uh, we have to we have to divide that back out. And so uh, so what you would have to do here is you would have to take this by itself 
and multiply this by the largest of these two. So by two in this case. So if I multiply this by two, then, um, then you don't have any more errors. And a different cool shape. So, uh, so I encourage you, if you want to invent something cool, to play with that. Uh, but for this video, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to take that back out and take that out and take that out and put it back to where it was. And, um, and let's try to play with this a little bit more. Um, let me see here. Where are we? So 8 and 0.5. So let's make it a little bit thinner and let's push it out a little bit more so we have more of that lattice uh, structure as opposed to the as opposed to the two surfaces. And uh, let's make it a little bit bigger or like less less repetitions. Six or five maybe even. Okay. All right. So now um, so this is just a standard um, a distance function and you can do all the things that you can do with other distance functions like twist and taper and different boolean operations and stuff like that. You can do that with this as well. So, so let's play with that a little bit and see what we can get. Um, let me just call this G1 over here and uh, G1 over there because uh, let's add some, let's start adding some, some of these gyroids. So there's a G2 and um, let's see if, for instance, we could have two interlocking lattices. Okay, so if I want to get two lattices, then I have to union them together. So I do float G equals the minimum of G1 and G2. If you don't know how, how these Boolean operations work, I made, a special, I made a video about that specifically. You can check that out over here, also in the description. Um, so this would be a union, uh, but if I do a union between two things that are exactly the same, and obviously you're, you're not going to see anything. Also, I have to say G over there. So uh, for that, I would have to move this over a little bit. So in order to move a shape over, what you have to do is you have to move the position over in the other direction. So what I could do here is move this over a little bit. So let me just uh, see here what I can do. All right, so now we have two of these shapes that are interlocking. So you can see that you can do some pretty cool shit with this. Um, another thing that we could do is uh, instead of that, we could say we, we, leave, we leave the first one um, and we kind of dilate the first one. Let's see. Okay, so now I have one that's dilated and the other one's in the middle. So now you have, um, well, this. Uh, so you can play with this to your heart's content and make many cool things. Um, so that is union. So that is a union, union. And uh, let's see what else we can do. We could do, uh, we could do a subtraction. So float G equals max of G1 uh, minus or comma minus G2. And uh, I'll probably have to move that second gyroid in order to get something. Mm, yeah, let me see here. Um, yeah, I, I'm just going to make more repetition here and then we'll see what happens. All right, so now you have one subtracted from the other one. Uh, this is the second gyroid subtracted from the first one. Yeah, I think it's probably... Nah, hmm. Here, let me change this. Yeah. Well, you can see this is powerful. You can do, you can do a, lot of, a lot of cool shit with this. Um, all right. Let's see what else. Mm, yeah, let's um, let's let's use the second gyroid as a bump map for the first one. So so yeah, this is subtraction. So subtraction. Uh, but let's use the second one as a bump map for the for the first one. So uh, what I do is I say um, g1 plus equals g2. And uh, I will, and then over here, I'll just say G1. And I'll probably have to attenuate that a little bit because this is way too much. Um, you know, this gives me this noodly soup over here. Um, but let me make that a little bit smaller. And also, let me push the first one, the first one back to the back to the um, back to the lattice. So I'll I'll push it over here. 
Okay, so now let's see. Okay, that's maybe too much. So now we can use, so now we're using the second one as a bump map for the first one. And uh, let's minus that. And let's play with the, with the repetitions a little bit on the second one. So maybe something like that. See, if you want something organic, that looks organic when, when you, like, if you want something that doesn't look like it repeats, then, then what you want to do is these two numbers, these two scales here, uh, they, sh they shouldn't be, um, I don't know what the word is for it, but they, sh like, they, they shouldn't be easy multiples of each other. So like, if, if this is four and this is eight, then every two periods they fall on top of each other again. And so that means that every two periods you would have the exact same bumps. And so that's not what you want. So you, you, want, you want numbers uh, like that don't do that. And, and these don't have to be integers, by the way, either. So, they, they, so what you want to do really is something like that. So that it can repeat a lot and it will never, or you, it, it can be very large and it will never really repeat. So for organic stuff, that is kind of important. <clears throat> All right, so let's see here. Can I push that a little bit more perhaps? make it a bit more pronounced uh, and then maybe push this a little bit smaller and uh, maybe smaller still now that's too small I guess all right um, and we can we can keep doing this and actually let me just also make this a bit more yeah okay like that and then I'll make it a little bit smaller here Anyways, this is the this is the art part of the art of code where you can tweak stuff forever until it looks good, uh, which I don't have too much time here, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, and uh, why stop here? We could we could add more more of these, so we can kind of fractalize this by by making many layers of it, right? Um, yeah, so you, you can do this with any pattern in 2D or in 3D. If you, if you take a copy of the pattern, you make it smaller and you rotate it a little bit and you paste it on this, on like, and you paste it on what you already have and you do that a couple times, you can get stuff that looks pretty, pretty rough. Um, so let's try to do that. So let's add G1 minus equals G3 times some smaller value. And now it adds these extra bumps. And then, uh, well, let's do this two more times so that we can get nice and random looking stuff. So a G4 and a G5. And again, uh, each time I'm going to roughly double this. So 40, uh, I don't know, like maybe 35. 35. And then uh, here I'm going to say 60. And, um, and then let's add these. So G1 minus equals... G4 times 0.1, and we have some more bumps. And uh, so you can do minus or you can do plus, and that gives you like a different effect, kind of. Uh, so that's another thing that you can play with. And, uh, and G1 plus equals G5 times 0.1. All right, so now we have, now we have this. Uh, I'm on Chrome. For some reason, Chrome on full screen doesn't look doesn't look nice. Um, I'm going to go to Firefox. Hang on. All right, Firefox to the rescue. Here we can see this without pixels in full screen. Um, so let's try to put some sort of material on this. So let's go over here. So over here I'm doing the ray march. Here I'm saying if I hit something, then put some color on this thing. And uh, let's see here. Mm. So one thing that, that I find very handy and that a lot of other people do as well is when they're modeling stuff, they use the normal for coloring instead. So let's, let's start with that. Uh, so I could just do that and that gives me these colors. Um, but it's a little bit saturated and also on the one side, like on the negative side, things can go very dark or even black. And so what is more common is to, because this, this um, this normal uh, go, is in the range from minus 1 to 1. So let's bring that into the 0, 1 range by doing this, 0.5 plus 0.5. And uh, that gives a little bit more pleasing effect. So now 
what I, what I would want is these creases here. I, I, I want some ambient occlusion in those creases. I want to darken them a little bit. And uh, there are different ways to do ambient occlusion, um, uh, but some of them are quite expensive, and, and sometimes there's just better ways of doing it cheaply, and then you also get a nicer result. So, um, because in this case, if we want just a crease here, uh, what we can do is because uh, that, that that crease is it like is like the it depends on well let me just collapse this on Firefox here so we get rid of those <laughs> so that crease just depends on this fir uh, sorry on this first gyroid or over here right so if I on the first bump gyroid so if I take that out then then the main ones are gone I mean like there's other creases for the second one third one uh, but I'm just talking about the main one right now and um, and so this G2 if we had access to access to that G2 then we could use that to shade stuff and so well we could just take this because we have the position um, down there so let's just take this control C and put it over here um, put it over here okay because here we have the 3d position so we should be able to get the same G2 as we had in the inside of the distance function and uh, let's just multiply by that G2 uh, times equals G2. Because that G2 I would like in 2D that would give you some black and white image, right? So we should be able to multiply by this. And uh, then we can get something really dark, um, but that is easily rem remedied because we could just multiply this by some larger number. And uh, now we get this. And so that, you know, was starting to look more interesting, but still kind of shitty. Uh, so we just need to refine this, this mapping here. And so what I'm going to do is instead of times 10, I'm going to use a smooth step to remap this. So uh, S, I'm going to use the S, I, I made an S define over here. In this template we have, I have this. So, so otherwise you'd have to just type smooth step and it would also work. Um, so I go over here and then I say, okay, start at zero and then go to 0.1, let's say. So this will, th this just says, if my G1 is smaller than zero, then your, then the output is zero. If it's between zero and 0.1, then, then it goes from zero to one. And after that, it stays at one. And so that gives me that. And if I make this smaller here, then I get a sharper crease, but the crease is not zero. So that tells me that this will go, that this G2 is go, goes negative. So let me just go over here and make this first uh, threshold negative. And would you look at that? Um, we stretch that out a little bit. So that looks pretty pleasing to me anyways. Um, so yeah, so there you have your, your Amri occlusion uh, for much cheaper than you would normally get it. And, um, and we could use it for other things as well. And, and also another thing, notice, notice that this, this crease or this, this amid occlusion goes, goes through where it gets cut off by the box as well. Uh, and that is because um, this, uh, this gyroid over here uh, is valid for, like, it, you, can you can evaluate that uh, in any point in, in 3D space. And so also on the inside of an object. Uh, so if you want to do volumetric texturing or whatever, then, then you could use this. Um, so yeah, so that is, that is pretty neat. I'm gonna, let's just take the box out and look at it. So over here, I, I, I like we, we kind of intersect with the box, right? So we could just do G1 uh, times 0.8 and look at it in, in all its glory. Uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to see here. Let me, let me also, um, let me also set the if you want to do that then you want to set your your uh, your distance so this is the ray origin uh, which is where the camera is basically and it's looking at a, at a point in three space uh, we can set the ray origin probably uh, to closer uh, closer to the to the center mm, yeah I'm not sure I'm kind of freewheeling here this is probably not going to work the way I want it to work and yeah, now it's not because my my look at point is not at zero Anyways, I'm going to leave it here, and, um, and yeah, so this is the end of the first part of this video, 
If you are not a Patreon yet, then you can go to Patreon right now because you're getting this video a week later than, than Patreons. And then, then you can sign up to Patreon and get the second part right away. Uh, if not, you're gonna have to wait a week. But uh, I hope you liked this. If you did, by the way, uh, please click that like button. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps out in promoting this video. So um, yeah, I hope you liked it and I hope to see you next time.